So my name is Arnaldo. I was supposed to be just an attendee here, but at the last minute I realized that my name was in the program, so I had to come up with slides. <laughs> and I, you yeah, yeah, and I, and I hope that they will be useful for something. So, yeah. So, it's P hole and data type profiling. The first one is mostly related to to BPF and BTF, uh, the aspects of payhole that are related to this. And, not, and there are other things that you can do with payhole, lots of things, but uh, what I'll be talking today will be related to the intersection with uh, BPF, BTF. And data type profiling, because it's some cool new feature that uh, NamYung implemented, uh, and that's getting better and better, and more people need to know about it so that they can use, benefit from it, and find the problems, because there are problems. Uh, so, Pierre, the first thing is that uh, BTF evolves over time, and so new stuff is being added. New stuff is being added, or you want uh, floating point information for S390, then you want uh, enumerations that are 64 bit long, and then you want this thing and the other thing and the other thing, and you want ways to select what ha what will be generated because uh, maybe the kernel doesn't support this or that. So that there is this uh, impedance match that this pairing of kernel, libpf, and uh, and BTF features. So. Uh, over time, we were adding new options to peer hole, but then this grew unwieldy. Uh, you have in the kernel a make file BTF where you s s specify that if it's more that that version of peer hole, then you can use this thing. The other version, you can use this extra thing, and so on and so forth. Uh, so uh, Alan McGuire came up with this BTF features that instead of a set of options, you have one option, and then uh, you have BTF features that you can specify, uh, comma separated, and then if the P hole uh, doesn't support it, it will just ignore. So as you go on implementing new features, you add those features, and in the kernels that make use of that, those, those features, you add this new feature that you want, and then uh, if, the, if the user that's building the kernel has an older version of P hole, no problem, uh, it will uh, just ignore that thing. So there, there's one last uh, check for the PA whole version, which is 126 that will be released soon. Uh, th those are some of the options that have been implemented, the new features for, for uh, BTF that were implemented after BTF features. Reproducible builds, uh, deck, deck for k funks so that you can enumerate the k funks uh, show that. And one that's being developed now, uh, it's about to be merged, uh, involves the kernel, involves PA hole involves uh, libbpf, which is distilled based BTF. I'm going to explain it briefly later. So it's to simplify uh, the, the the make file uh, BTF in the kernel. Um, yeah, that's what I. Uh, if you you have BTF uh, features strict to make sure that the options that you are using uh, are the the ones that are supported in the version that uh, PA hole that you are using. So while developing, you use this, and then, then you can uh, remove that strict. Um, so that's how the, the kernel is now. You have all these test for versions, and then now we're going to have it like this. Um, um, that's J for uh, parallel build and BTF features, and then all the, the, the options that you want, the, the BTF features that you want. Uh, reproducible build, the, the, there was a patch that was posted disabling building uh, BTF uh, in a parallel way because every time you, you build it, uh, you could get a different uh, BTF output because uh, depending on a machine load or whatever, one type could be encoded before the other and then the next time you try it, it would be on a different options so people wanted to have a reproducible kernel image and for that the, the, the solution with the existing peer holes just disable building in parallel. So I implemented uh, 
the, uh, par uh, I kept parallel dwarf loading and encode BTF in the same order uh, th that it is on the VM Linux uh, file. If the VM Linux file has lots of compile units, one per object file that composes the kernel. And so I keep that order every time. So in the end, the result is the same. Uh, there is a new uh, uh, regression test, which is a reproducible build that will build uh, BTF detached on a separate file with uh, one uh, thread, two threads, three threads, all the way to the number of processors in a machine, and it goes comparing it to a base, uh, to the one done uh, with just one thread. Uh, uh, and it, it, it matches all the time. Uh, performance is minimal. Alan Maguire measures 100 milliseconds uh, for reproducible, non-reproducible. It still is parallel. Uh, the, the encoding is in parallel, so it's not. Uh, uh, the, the, do the uh, BTF, uh, BTF encoding in, uh, in parallel doesn't seem to be needed at this point, but we can do it later as to. to get everything in parallel. Decla deck tag for k funks, it, that's, the kernel has these k funks and tools like BPF, BPF trace wants to enumerate them. What are the k funks that I have here? So it will look at, uh, at BTF and will uh, look for those BTF kind deck tag that has as its value BPF k funk. And then from this tag, it gets the, the, the function. I, I'm going to show you. So encoding it, you're going to do that BTF features and deck tag, deck tag functs, encode it, detach it, OK, generate it. And then enumerating, uh, you'll do BTF to BTF dump. You, you dump the tags on this uh, BTF uh, file, and then you're going to get things like this, uh, the BPFK func and the types. If we look, there are, in the kernel that I tested, 116k funks at the moment. And dumping one, you do that, that thing, and, and you get this function cgroup stat update, which is a k funk, and it points to 94, no, no the, the, the deckly tag points to the type ID 94151, which is that funk cgroup updated that has a type not 94150, which is this has this function prototype with those arguments, and it's okay. It goes back to to the kernel of uh, sources. Yeah, everything matches. That that's the k funk that was declared in the kernel, and now I can enumerate and get the function uh, the function uh, prototype. And there is one tool that is a companion of phole, which is pfunct, and then you can. Uh, consume it like uh, BPF trace will uh, at some point when it gets patched. You do pfunk dash dash prototypes, use BTF from that file, and then it will show all the the, the functions that are the encoded in BTF and the ones that have that uh, uh, modify that attribute BTF K funk will have it. Uh, the, uh, the prototype will be printed in C style, compilable even. And you're gonna see those. And then there is the other ones. Okay, well, but you can look at it. Resilient split BTF. It's a problem that people when, when you build the you, you have a kernel and you have and you have you build the kernel and the modules. The modules will not have all the types that it uses. We will have all the types that are specific to this uh, module. The ones that are in the kernel already will be kept there, and then there will be references from the BTF file for this kernel module to the base BTF, which is for the kernel. Okay, but if you do a change in the kernel, you fix something or you add some new function, everything gets renumbered, and then uh, there, there is a drift, uh, and that's, it's not a problem when you reinstall a distro kernel because you reinstall all the modules and then everything is reorganized, it matches. But for out of three uh, kernel modules, which is a need for certain uh, uh, organizations, 
it's, that's a problem. So Alan McGuire is working on having a way for you for a kernel module that's built out of, out of tree to, to have some sort of references to the base type that it uses and which is not that big, which is not uh, and then when you are going to load it, there is a process that involves the kernel, the BPF, and this this actual information to match everything and then do relocations, etc., and make it work. Kind of like co red to some degree, but I mean this information has to be available for this magic to happen. It, it, it's about to be merged. The to-do for Pinhole is to support Kfunk uh, Kfunk DAX, but I did it while coming here. The, uh, the parallel reproducible encoding of BTF doesn't seem to be so uh, a priority now. And testing this resilient split BTF tests it more and, and, and merge. And then data type profiling. Uh, uh, so recap. Uh, we for for doing uh, profiling based not on code but on data types. Uh, in 2013, uh, uh, Stefan and Rania uh, uh, and Andy Klein started uh, working on using the features that were becoming available in Intel processors, where you on you know, PBS you can ask the processor to look at uh, load to, to sample from time to time. Uh, memory loads that take more than that many core cycles. 30, 30, the minimum is four, and, and it's a model specific register, MSR. You, you specify what's the threshold, and then you, you start getting samples. Those samples have lots of information about this memory access, as we will see from the output of the tools. And then PerfMan was uh, the first one uh, we're going to see. And then afterwards, there was PerfC2C, which is for fine false sharing. You, you get uh, some, cache, some cache line that's being uh, constantly uh, being evicted from, from the cache. And then it, the tool helps you to identify uh, that this, this code here is accessing a data structure uh, that, that specific instance of the data structure and the other code is accessing it as well, but one is accessing it for reading and the other one is accessing it for writing. So it's, it's moving. We have to reorganize the data structure in a way that this false sharing uh, doesn't happen uh, to better utilize the cache. But then it gets to the problem of uh, resolving the data type. That's what gets us to data type profiling. That, that, that there has to be a way for us to, to do this. So let's take a look at per, uh, PerfMan. Uh, it's for main loads and main stores. You have information about the data address in addition to the uh, AP address uh, where in code where this happened. You have information about the cache hierarchy, where this memory is going. Is it to the uh, first level, second level, third level, uh, local memory, remote memory, like in a NUMA node, in another NUMA node? And the tool uh, workflow is it's the perf normal one. You do a record, and then it will select by default those main load and main store with a default of 30 CPU cycles. You can change that uh, in the command line, and then you do a report. Okay. So record. Uh, this simple one, uh, dropping caches and then doing a perf main record for the whole system, discarding the output, and then it records some stuff. And then you do perf at least and look at what the events recorded. And it says CPU atom. And then I remember that this machine is new and it's a hybrid. It has different kinds of processors, efficiency one, performance one. I was expecting that both the performance one and the, the, the efficiency one were, but no, perf memory record needs help, needs love to, to, to work with this. So hybrid system, uh, in, in this case, I'm missing the CPU core events. And there was a problem because when I uh, stopped using perf mem record and instead did perf record and specifying the, the, the events on the command line, it didn't work. So I had to look at lots of uh, patches from Ken Liang at Intel and discovered that that's the boilerplate, boilerplate that you have to do. You have to create a group and then put some special event in front of the one that I want and then it works. 
but so we have to get perf memory cord and make it uh, deal with this and whatever the, uh, uh, get this boilerplate out of the of the way. But finally, if you do perf have list, you're gonna see the uh, CPU core, and then there is this auxiliary event that I had to, to put in the other ones. Okay, so if I do report, perf memory report, I'm gonna see things like this. So it starts to get interesting. The default sort order, in perf you can uh, specify what you, how do you want it to be sorted. So you can say uh, by CPU only, and then you're gonna see just, oh, this CPU is having the most samples or the most main loads or whatever, and then it will be just one column. But you can say CPU and, uh, and thread, and then you're gonna see, oh, this CPU and a second level for this thread. For this specific tool, the default sort order is that one. You see, it's really big, it cannot fit on the, on the screen, but it gives an idea of what you can uh, see, uh, what kind of information you can get from, from this uh, tool. And then you can stop using perf main report and do perf report and dash dash sort and select one of those and start to see things like this. You do perf main uh, report, main mode to access those uh, specific sort orders. It's, it's a usability glitch. Now that we are working more, more people are working on this uh, kind of uh, events, we will try and improve these to reduce this uh, baggage. So, but we can see that if I say dash dash sort mem, the, the type of uh, 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 memory or the, the level of cache, we can have a breakdown for this. We can do other things like uh, perf report dash dash DSO kernel call seams just for the kernel, and uh, one way of specifying just for the kernel because this uh, record, this perf data file was done for kernel and user space, so I'm throwing away the user space part. And then I can say, uh, tell me the symbol and the instruction latency for that. That's one of the things. And then you see that that find was on a BTRFS uh, file system. So that's BTRFS being search is, is the one that's uh, uh, having the most main loads, that accessing, accessing memory that's probably not in the cache, so causing uh, cache traffic. And then you're gonna see the, the other ones. Perfc2c, uh, which came after, it's for, as I said, it's for uh, cache, uh, for false sharing detection. A uh, record report is ca oriented to cache lines so that you can match the cache lines that are, uh, be, uh, at this cache line is, is going out of the, the cache frequently, so there must be somebody who is writing to it and the other people just reading. So it's, it would be good that you reorganize the data search to move those things so different cache lines, but then it doesn't resolve the type. That's when we get to, to data type profiling. It, it only shows, like there was suggested previously on the Nam Young's talk, that you show the source line and number for where this is happening. So you open those two files, where it's being written, where it's being read, and then you, reading the source code, you get the lock. You, you, you get closer to the lock, and then you can make a, a, a decision. So it helps that it, there are several uh, uh, commit logs in the kernel where you see that people didn't say that they use it perf C2C, but the output betrays it. You, you, you can see that, oh, it was using perf C2C that uh, it find, found out about the false sharing, and then the fix removed the false sharing. There are articles on L uh, LWN where uh, this is discussed. On the Perf Wiki, we have a useful links. There are a series of blog posts and articles where people uh, use C2C to, to find th those problems. So resolving type. Uh, we have dwarf location expressions and we can parse the, 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 once we know that that's the function, we can disassemble it, get to the, to the instruction that caused the, the sample, so where the sample took place, and look at it and go on from there. Uh, and we have type info from Dwarf and from BTF. Yeah. So uh, the next step is how to do this disassembly. So perf annotate 
uh, it uh, already did this assembly in Perf so that you could do navigation. You could do, let's say, Perf top, and then you, you press A and you get the disassembled, uh, for, uh, disassembled function. And then you can go on and there is a jump and, you, it, and it draws an arrow to the target and you can press enter, go to the target, press enter on a call instruction, it, it parses the destination, you go to this other function and so on and so forth and you are looking at the, uh, how many samples took place in each of the lines. So we had this infrastructure but only for jumps, calls, reds, things like that. Uh, so. And, and, and there, there is also capstone, which is something that uh, we, be, we, we were made aware of more recently, uh, that comes from the security community, that is a disassembler library. So it's faster. Uh, we, we, we already have it uh, in Perf. Sometimes it doesn't work, but we can detect that it's not finishing the thing, and then we throw it away and fall back to, to the disassembly that has been in Perf for a long time, which is basically parsing the disassembly from object dump. You fork object dump, you parse it all, and then you use it to, to, to do the navigation and annotation. Uh, the, Capstone has support for PowerPC, ARM, etc. So it's something that we're going to be exploring more as time goes by. And Capstone now is also being used for Perform Notate. So Perform Notate now is faster because it uses Capstone, uh, which is, is good. We are implementing a new feature, but improving the previous one. So, uh, so Namiung started uh, uh, parsing more instructions, like uh, move, add, sub. The, the instructions were simple, uh, where main loads happen. Uh, Purpose per, per supports being reviewed, that there is, uh, which is good, that the, the needs for different architectures are being uh, identified, so the core will be changed accordingly, and other architectures. The more user, the better. The, the more people trying this and, 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 and having no, noticing, oh, it's slow because object dump, it's slow. It, yeah, so capstone. So uh, we should have some sort of uh, all the threads that's doing this on demand and then whatever ideas are welcome. So the interesting thing with this is that uh, we integrate this with the perf workflow. So we, as I said, for the sort order, uh, we have lots of sort orders. Now we have two more. We have type and type of. So now instead of using CPUs, etc., we can see the type. And the type together with the function. The type together with the CPU. Oh, what? oh that CPU is using more that type. Or what's the workload that's running there? Whatever. I mean, uh, uh, so here, if you do perf report dash dash stdio and dash s sort order type for that find that I did, so most of the, the most of the the main loads were for stack operations. For some reason, it was not possible to get to the type, but we know that was for for stack operations. Second, for struct btrfs key, that makes sense. It's btrfs. Then there is a a named struct. Mm. Then 9.13, we don't know. Um, uh, it's an opportunity for people to contribute patches. And then integer uh, types, and then unsigned an integer, and so on and so The stack canary, I mean, the, it was interesting. He realized that, uh, oh, this is stack canary, so oh, we're going to tag this accordingly and show it uh, there. So, okay. But you can the types symbol. So if you have something which is stack operation, okay, but it's now we break the break down the stack operation in the symbols that where this thing took place. So uh, or let's say that that, that uh, uh, unnamed struct was in upreads. So oh, this is a mutex or and so on and so forth. So you you go on uh, breaking down, and then you can see where it was. So this uh, unknown was main copy. There was a guy who said, well, why? That should be easy. Oh, it, we have to investigate this and try to figure out why, and then try to improve like the stack canary was done, uh, and so on and so forth. So fields, you can say, 
type of set, type, sort order, type and, and then type of set in, in a hierarchical way instead of the non-hierarchical way on the previous one. Uh, and so there, there was lots of types. I focused on, on inode, so uh, most of the access to inode were for that ISP. And then, and then you, you see, it, it would be good if that the first five would be on the same cache line, yes? Uh, if they are accessed mostly for, for reading, let's say. So uh, th that's things to do in the future. And another, another one, type, type of set and symbol. And then you see, you see BTRFS key 7.05% on uh, object ID and the breakdown by symbols for that specific uh, field of that specific type, so on and so forth. Another an perfect annotate data type, you, you get uh, the, the uh, number of samples per, per type, per, per, per field. And, and here you, you see that uh, the access for that U64 is on offset 9, um, which shouldn't be because the alignment says that it should be on a multiple of 8. So if you use a uh, PA hole to show the BTRFS key from the current kernel BTF information, it opens that sys kernel BTF VM Linux, you see that it's packet. Uh, it's packet. BTF doesn't have information about if this something is packet, but the BTF loader in PA hole uh, uh, derives that from the uh, placement of a U64 on a unaligned, uh, no naturally aligned place, which is nine. Uh, and, and there's this uh, goody here. You say perf dash dash debug type profile, annotate data type. And then it will say all the steps um, that it's doing so that you understand what is, how it's using the debug information, how it's using internal uh, algorithms uh, in perf to, to get to it. And if you look there, yeah, boo. Late act, it's, it's a boo on, on the. Another, uh, it, it is showing, uh, the, in this case, it didn't found the, the variable. So using these, you can go back and try to follow yourself and try to uh, figure out if you can use some other uh, approach to figure out the, the type. So if you look at the, at the Arc Azim CPU priority. It's a per CPU. So there is enough information here for you to try to figure out a way to fix this this part. BPF map. Let's say uh, oh, you see that uh, it's the OPS and then the key size uh, that are the most frequently accessed. And this uh, in one specific case where uh, was traced an application that used BPF. Uh, that's the output for this specific type. Uh, uh, that, that's the question that Nam Jung did for maybe before. But uh, you, 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 yeah, we can use BTF for lots of things for 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 typing for, for the K funks that we have now, for line number. But then we don't have line number for the kernel. We have just line number for BPF programs. But then when the load operations happens on BPF programs, we should be able to do it as well. And then use the the line number information that is available for these BPF programs. It's not available for the kernel as a whole if you don't have dwarf, but you you have it for the BPF. So should you use it. And that, that that's just like um, uh, we we could. Uh, it was discussed here and there uh, of having a debug info that has the, all this extra BTF thing, but separate from. Uh, which would still be preferable to dwarf to, to, for some people because it would be more compact. But yeah, that's uh, what I had to say. Uh. Um, one question: Like, uh, is this uh, annotation already available? If, if, like for available, yes. For, yes. for, for, for I use? mean, I. Well, I it, it, it was first merged, I think, two kernel versions ago, and then the okay. last kernel version there was improvements, and I will, when back home, send the batch of more uh, improvements. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Super awesome. Any questions, comments?
So um, my question is this, for example, this split BTF that you mentioned before yeah. in the first part of the talk. Mm. And, uh, and also, you know, like the BTF needs that you have for the data profiling. So if in an hypothetical scenario where imagine that in the future we start generating BTF when building the kernel from the compiler directly, yeah. the duplicating it at link time, yeah. and then getting PA hole actually instead of consuming DORF and generating BTF, yeah, consume consuming BTF, BTF and, and completing and, and, it, and, and, amending and, and, it, and generating BTF. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it has a BTF loader. So you could say, get some stuff from Dwarf, some stuff from, from BTF, or just from, from BTF. I mean, it's, it should be, it gets to internal state, internal representation, and then encodes. So, yeah. Okay, so basically everything, all the evolutions on the BTF format you are doing, and like the split BTF and so and I guess you will come with more stuff yeah. as you need it more. Right. Like, right. Uh, and waiting for the compiler to... Uh, right, yeah. so are uh, you keeping in mind that at some point it could be right. that you will not have the source dwarf yeah. to... Exactly. Okay. Exactly. okay. Instead of getting from the dwarf and doing... Well, so I, I get BTF, uh, it, it will do less. It will, will be more... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Work less. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think that that's, that's the, the case. Uh, you, you, new features, people adds to what it converts from Dwarf or it gets from the BTF. It could even do some adjustments on the, G the BTF that comes from the compiler if the, the need arises. Yeah, we count on that. I think like those, uh, uh, the data sec that you are yeah. synthesizing from. Uh, yeah. It comes from the kernel, you, you cannot. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. All right, so we need to move on with the next session. Thank you very much.